we're going to be looking at stellar evolution, that is the evolution of stars. So all stars are formed when gas, and this is mainly hydrogen gas, and dust are attracted together by gravitational forces to produce a cloud, which is called a nebula. And as more gas and dust collapse into the nebula, then gravitational potential energy converts into kinetic energy for the gas molecules. And as temperature is directly proportional to the mean Ke, then the temperature of the gas molecules increases. And this forms a protostar, which is the beginnings of a star. The protostar continues to attract gas and dust, so we get a continued gravitational collapse, which gives rise to very high core temperatures. And when temperatures reach the order of magnitude of 10 to the 7 Kelvin, that's high enough to allow the fusion of hydrogen nuclei into helium nuclei. That is, the hydrogen nuclei have enough kinetic energy to overcome the electrostatic repulsion between them so the nuclei can come close together for the strong nuclear force to take over in order to fuse the nuclei into helium nuclei. And now we have our star because fusion is occurring and the stage is called the main sequence. So it's the stable stage in the life of a star. And that's because the outward pressure due to the radiation emitted from fusion balances the inward gravitational collapse. And our sun is in its main sequence stage. And it's about halfway through the stage. So it has another 4.5 billion years to go. So if we now look at the evolution of our sun after the main sequence stage, when the hydrogen runs out, so then there'll be no more fusion of hydrogen nuclei into helium nuclei, the star will contract due to the gravitational forces. And so the resulting increase in core temperature will allow the fusion of helium nuclei into carbon nuclei. But the fusion energy release can overcome the gravitational forces to allow the star's outer layers to expand, forming a very bright but cool star. And this will be the red giant stage. When the outer layers are lost from the red giant, planetary nebula are formed. And when fusion stop, the core contracts due to gravitational forces. So that a dim, hot, dense star is formed from the red giant, which is the white dwarf. And the star will just cool down to eventually become a black dwarf and it will be no longer emitting light because it's too cold. For stars that have three solar masses to eight solar masses, solar mass is ms, so that is the mass of our sun, then they have large enough mass so that their cores can reach higher temperatures to allow further fusion reactions. So for example, fusion of helium to carbon, and then carbon to neon, neon to oxygen, etc. And so they can have many main sequence and red giant stages. But eventually when fusion stops, we're left with a white dwarf. And the Chandra-Sekhar limit sets 
the upper limit for the mass of a white dwarf and that is equal to 1.4 solar mass. So stars that had an initial mass up to eight solar masses do not have enough mass to overcome what's called the Fermi pressure of the electrons, which is also known as the electron degeneracy pressure. The electrons are so closely packed that further collapse is not possible. For stars which have initial mass greater than eight solar masses, then a red supergiant is formed where the core will be made of iron because you can fuse up to iron. And this is possible because for fusing for heavier and heavier nuclei, there's, as there'll be a greater electrostatic repulsion between them, you need to achieve higher core temperatures, so kinetic energies, to overcome the electrostatic repulsion. So you need larger mass stars in order to provide the gravitational collapse into the kinetic energies needed. And we end with iron because fusion beyond iron is not possible because it will not result in the release of energy. When fusion stops, the star collapses due to the gravitational forces, which are large enough to overcome the Fermi pressure of the electrons, so that the electrons will be forced into the nucleus, and where the electrons and protons can combine to form neutrons. The intense pressure in the core produces an intensely bright exploding star. And this is the supernova stage. Stars which had an original mass between 8 to 12 solar masses after supernova will leave behind a core of neutrons, giving a neutron star. And a neutron star is as dense as nuclear matter. For stars which had an original mass above 12 solar masses, further gravitational collapse causes the core to have such a high density that not even light can escape its gravitational field. And we're left with a black hole. No light is emitted from a black hole, so it's got zero luminosity and cannot be seen. Here's a summary of the life of stars. The first four stages are how stars are formed. And the sun is currently at its main sequence stage. And when it completes this stage, the sun will become a red giant and then a white dwarf. However, for more massive stars, they will become red supergiants after the main sequence stage and then turn supernova and then will either become a neutron star or a black hole.